medal in the Olympics, uh, but he will not be joining us for this news conference. Let's bring out the silver and gold medalist onto the stage. The silver medalist, also from the United States, also winning his second consecutive medal with a time of 19.62, Kenny Benarek. And the gold medalist, the first ever medal in the 200 meters for Botswana, the fifth fastest Olympic time ever, the fifth fastest all time with a time of 19.46, let's see lay to BOGO. We're gonna open up the floor for questions. Before we start, we do have simultaneous translation in French and English. You can scan the QR codes for that. And if you raise your hand, we'll bring a volunteer over to bring you the mic. Please state your name and your outlet before you ask the question. Questions for Kenny and let's see lay, the silver and gold medalist in the men's 200 meters. There we go. What's silly? How, how proud of you do you think your mother would be right now? Uh, I believe she could be the, one of the, the happiest people on the planet because she believed in me and I had so much doubt for myself. I forgot to state my name. Robert Johnson, Let's Run .com. One more question. As a junior, you were more known as a 100 meter runner. And that was your better event, and you were getting silver in the 200. Now as a professional, it's changed. What explains that? And do you think of yourself now as being better at the 200 than the 100? I would say the 100 is too, uh, the 100 is too tactical. You have to perfect everything. So the 200 is more of uh, everybody's race. So you could correct along the way as you, as, uh, as you go through the, to the line. So I would say both ways I'll still uh, be there on the finals. Right here. Evelyn Water from Olympic Channel. Uh, question for Letsila and Ken. First of all, Letsila, at what point did you feel like you have got the race? And for Ken, how well do you think Letsila executed today's race? Thank you. What was your last question again? She asked how well you think Letsila executed today's race. Oh, uh, I mean, I think he had a perfect race. I mean, he, I've never seen him get out of the curve like that before. Um, so, you know, my, my mindset was to get out and lead the race and try to maintain that. And, you know, let's see, he was right there with me and, you know, he had the better execution. Like he did very well today. And I mean, it's no surprise. I mean, we've seen what he's been able to do before. Um, I always knew he was capable of this. So, you know, congrats to him. Uh, I knew I had to match Kenny's start first because he has uh, the best start when he's in front of you. So I had to match and execute everything that we did in training because the first time when I started my training for the Olympics, uh, we, we perfected the curve each and every day without fail. So I knew if I could uh, get that perfection today and don't stumble from the block, I knew I could match Kenny. And when we went on the, on the street, when I saw I was in neck, uh, neck and neck with Kenny, I knew uh, that uh, I had the, the, the 400 meter program on my legs. So I'll just use it to finish the race. Other questions? Robert again. Uh, two questions for Let's Silly. One, you talked about your coach in the mix zone. Can you just tell us his, his name? And then two, uh, you know, Usain Bolt was the face of track and field for so long. and. and I think won the six gold medals. Is that something you aspire to, world records and being the face of track and field in the future? Um, his name is uh, Kebonyi Mudisados Musimanyani. And uh, I think uh, for me, I can't be the, the face of athletics because uh, I'm not uh, an arrogant or a loud person like Noah. So I believe Noah is the face of athletics. Oh, there you go. Thanks for putting your phone up. I can see you that way. <laughs> I'm Brian Mann with National Public Radio. And this question is for both of you. Um, we now know it's confirmed that Noah Lyles ran after he'd been diagnosed with COVID. Um, can you say what you think about how that shaped this race and also whether you feel like you were put at any risk by his participation health-wise? 
Uh, personally, I wouldn't say I was. We were at risk because uh, it's not a, a contact sport. So even uh, during the the warm ups in the cold room, uh, he was just there by himself. So personally, I wondered why. I didn't want to make assumptions of what he could be going through. But after what all he said on the after the hundred meter final. I thought maybe it's just one of those days when he's not having a, a great day. So I didn't think of COVID or anything else. Uh, I mean, I don't think I was put at risk at all. I mean, I take care of my body. Um, so when it comes to getting sick, that's uh, rare for me. So, I mean, when I found out, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I mean, he went out there, did his best um, while being sick and... I mean, you know, I hope he gets better. That's all I can really say. Right here in the middle. Thank you. My name is Paul Nzioki, Radio France International, Kiswahili Service. I have a question to Tebogo. We had Akani Simbine, uh, you and Ferdinando Manyala coming from Africa with very good records in the sprints. They did not, you and them did not make it to the podium in the 100 meters. Did that mount any pressure to you, being, in, being the only African in the 200? Uh, you, are, you are wrong on, the, on that one because there were four Africans on that final. So first of all, I was happy. I wasn't under any pressure of getting a medal. All that was important for us was seeing more Africans into the final. Here. Yeah, Brian, Brian Pinelli with Team USA. Uh, once again, for you, Kenny. Uh, just take us through your race, what you think you executed well, uh, how it overall went, where you could have been better. And secondly, uh, any comparisons to the, to the race that won you silver in Tokyo 2020, which was a better race? Um. I think this was a better race, but execution-wise, I think I did like 95% of it correct. Um, like I said, the goal was just to come off the bend first, like I always do, and then you know stay relaxed and then just get after the last 100. And I feel like I was a little tight. Um, so, I mean, that's the result I kind of got after just trying to just run like that. But like I said, Tobogo did it. He ran a really good race, and you know he was the better man today. Um, I guess the only similarity is, you know, Tokyo got silver, um, here silver and, uh, you know, Noah getting third, I mean, kind of the same situation. Um, I mean, that's about it. Right here in the blue. She's, she's coming to you. Thank you. Question from CMG, China State TV. Question for Keynes. So my question is about your teammate, Naiden. Sorry, he's not here. So I'm wondering, so what do you think about the way the US anti-doping agency handles his case? Do you think it's fair play? It's fair for the other athletes to compete in Paris 2024? Thank you. I mean, I don't really know much about that whole situation. Um, you know, from what I've seen is they've done what they needed to do and he was cleared. So, I mean, that's not my area of expertise. I really don't have a comment on that. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, I'm from China, so I also have a question for Kenny. So have you ever noticed the statement from China, um, USADA? What'd you say? Have you ever noticed the statement from Chinese China anti anti doping agency on USADA? No, I'm not really on social media or in the internet. I mean, once the track season kind of starts, I'm you know locked in, so I'm not really looking at track stuff or anything. So I don't even know what's going on. Okay, thank you. In the back, we're going to do one last question.
Hello, Robin Gremel, Agence France Presse. For Kenny, tomorrow there is the relay. Uh, what's your take on that? I guess you supposed to be in the team. What's going to be the best team for Team USA tomorrow? What do you think? Um, I mean, from what I know, you know, Noah is dealing with this little issue. So, I mean, we're going to try to figure out if he's going to run or not. If he doesn't, we're going to have to reconstruct the team uh, to, you know, put out the best. Um, but, I mean, either way, I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, two, two of the guys that ran are my teammates. And, you know, if we have one or two of them on there uh, with the chemistry that we have, I think we can still get the job done. Um, I mean, as you guys seen before, that U.S. has had history of, you know, having not having good handoffs. But this year I'm feeling very confident. Um, we put in the work. We have the chemistry. And all we got to do is just treat it like any other race, and then we should get the job done and win. We do have one more question for Let's See Lay. Right here. Hi, Let's See Lay. Congratulations. Uh, another moment from Media 24 in South Africa. I just want to know um, your preparation. Did you at any stage uh, train with uh, Akani or, or any of the South African guys? And uh, also, what is it in, in uh, Botswana that uh, makes you guys uh, do so well, uh, especially the sprinters coming through? Uh, first of all, I haven't trained uh, with any of the African guys. Uh, it's just uh, the small group in Mau. What makes uh, Botswana special is uh, it's the coaches, those who are dedicated of doing their work and being passionate about what they want to do. So they will help you go through every step of the way until you make it. Like how uh, we didn't have uh, any 400 meter hurdles ever, but uh, the coaches made sure that uh, uh, we have one, at least one in the Olympics, and then hopefully for the coming years we'll see more and more of uh, other athletes, not just uh, 100, 200, 400 meters. And we'll also see the, the women's coming back, you know, because there's been that drought, and now they, they're just getting uh, better and better each and every day. Kenneth Benarek, silver. Let's see, Leigh Tobogo, gold. Congratulations, gentlemen, and thank you. Thank you.